she's going down, man. in the back. in the back. It's a huge match day in the Premier League. Brentford have given City a little bit of hope, taking a couple points off Arsenal. So it's only uh, a six-point gap between City and Arsenal. Uh, so must-win game. Try to put the pressure on Arsenal to then try and beat Arsenal, hopefully, on Wednesday. And if that does happen, City will have a game in hand, but they will be top of the table. And that could be big mentally. Uh, in terms of like um, the mentality aspect of today's game and the reaction from City fans, in the light of the whole FFP, uh, financial breach, allegations, etc. If you want to learn more about that, by the way, go check out my most recent YouTube video. There were two ways that City fans and Pep uh, especially could have reacted. There could have been like this sort of like, meek, timid reaction, not really sure what's going to happen. Or it could be like an act of like defiance. And that's exactly what we saw from Guardiola in the press conference. City fans love that. And the atmosphere from around uh, the ground so far, people bringing flares and stuff to welcome uh, uh, the players. And the chance, you know, uh, City whipping out the City going down with a billion in the bank. It's, I'm really hoping there's going to be a really positive reaction when we actually get into uh, the stadium as well. I have no idea what's really going on with the uh, team and the formation and the lineup today. I'm guessing it's going to be Rodri at centre back and then Gundogan in the sort of six role. Got to win today. Brentford have given us a slight chance, a slight glimmer of hope. I'm going to say City win 2 0. It's going to be Filch from Harry Potter.
huge result in what was a must-win game for City is to beat Aston Villa 3-1. It was going to be very interesting to see how the fans reacted to the whole um, financial breach stuff that's been going on. And thankfully, uh, we, we reacted in uh, what I think was a very positive way, uh, very vocal throughout, uh, you know, singing ironic songs like City's going down with a billion in the bank. Uh, Mancini, you know, he came from Italy, Italy, we paid him secretly, that sort of uh, thing. And, you know, giving it back and forth with the Villa fans. So I was really happy with how uh, the fans reacted. And I think that hopefully uh, went to the players because the first half was like, not the city of old, like, you know, but like sort of like more similar to like a performance at the start of the season where I thought City were really good, uh, brave, uh, direct, lovely little interplay in the midfield between, you know, Bernardo and Rodri and and Gundogan um, uh, committing uh, Villa players, just always looking a threat, controlling the ball. Aston Villa had basically nothing uh, to sniff at in uh, the first half, looking dangerous from set pieces uh, as well. And yeah, it was just a really good uh, performance in the first half, especially. Uh, second half, even though Guardiola preferred it, I think that a lot of fan sentiment is the first half was much better than the second half. Diaz went off because he had a yellow card. Haaland went off because he had a slight knock. Hopefully he'll be okay for Wednesday. Alvarez came on, Akanji came on. And as good as Akanji's been this season, he is a good defender. But I think that's basically where it ends. He's not as good, he's not as comfortable on the ball as like uh, Laporte or Stones. And he, he gave away the ball in a very stupid uh, situation in the second half. And I don't think he provides that calmness at the back. He's not, he's not as positively aggressive as Diaz is. Uh, he's, He's not like a leader like Diaz is, uh, I think. So I think Ruben Diaz, now that he's back from his injury uh, and he was given like 45 minutes, I, I think he's got to play, if he's fit, basically every single uh, game, preferably with Laporte uh, as his uh, partner, because I think that's a really nice uh, combination of centre-half partners. It's not a coincidence that the first half was measured, calm, nothing nothing really bad happened i think at one point walker gave the ball away diaz with a fantastic challenge snuffed out the danger before it even began a kanji i feel like is a much more passive defender for, for the goal for example i know bernardo gives it away well what surprise nothing to do with the system issue once again a midfielder for no reason gives the ball away under no pressure again a kanji i feel like he backs off a little bit and i'd like to see him go into uh, the defender to win the ball obviously not to take him out and clean him out but i just know i just know that diaz would have got his um he would he would have got something on that shot and he probably would have deflected it and it would have been a brilliant block bernardo silva had a really weird role he played at left back he played at center back at times when Villa had the ball, that was odd. Um, it's played sometimes in central midfield. It worked. It worked. It was just really weird to see that sometimes he was he was a centre back, literally. Rodri was excellent, deserved his man of the match accolade. He seemed to be much more aggressive in terms of his pressing in this game. Um, he seemed to be much more. Di uh, he seemed to like want to carry the ball more. He seemed to like take charge of like the creative mantle for this game. But it was excellent. Um, shout out Jack Grealish, who once again had a really, really good game. He won the corner for the goal, for the first goal, um, and then he won the penalty uh, for the goal, which killed the game off. And you can say it's soft if you want. It's a penalty. Um, he could have won another penalty. I don't know if it was. I know there was a VAR check for handball when he did a shot, uh, which just went past the post. Not sure if it was a handball. Or not, but it could it could have been. And yes, a Grealish had a really good game as well. Um, Mara scored the penalty. Don't really know why Holland didn't take it. Maybe they've had a conversation beforehand because Guardiola said he wanted Holland to take it, but Rodri picked up the ball and gave it to Mara's. So uh, as I say, don't know what's going on, but Holland seemed happy for Mara's and he celebrated with him. And Mara's pointed to Holland when he scored the penalty. So there's must be there must have been a discussion of sorts, uh, but. I really don't want Mara's taking the, the penalties. Aston Villa fans, they can get they get a one out of ten because they uh, didn't respect like the, there was like a one minute of applause for like a, a city's honorary honorary uh, president who passed away, and they decided to not respect that. Uh, so they get a one out of ten by default. If they beat Arsenal on Wednesday, they will technically be top of the table with a game in hand, of course. But mentally, that could be a huge obstacle for Arsenal to overcome. So this was really important to put in a good performance, get the three points. Good to see Walker playing well. Uh, good to see uh, Diaz start and, and play well. Well, that is the video. Hope you enjoyed uh, the vlog. There's not going to be a home Premier League game for a hot minute. I know there's like, I think it's like four or five away games in a row. So it will be a while for the next one. 
But uh, do make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to go the extra mile, like my lovely uh, patrons and my supporters on Patreon. Uh, you're more than welcome to do so. You can join for as little as one pound a month, and you get like a little, little shout out here. Um, it should hopefully be going on the screen uh, there. Uh, link is in the the uh, description. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and shout out obviously to Miz and Frozone and Curtis and Kante, my beautiful, uh, very high tier knob, but it's my beautiful. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Goodbye, guys.